According to the Food Allergy and Anaphylaxis Network, better known as FAN, the incidence of peanut and tree nut allergy among children has tripled between 1997 and 2008. And in many of these cases, the allergic reaction can range from a tingling sensation around the mouth and lips, hives, and even death. This morning, we're focusing on this growing trend and what people are doing to create more awareness. We have with us Maria Acebal, she's general counsel and vice president of FAN, and seven-year-old Leandro de Armas, FAN's child ambassador. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Leandro, let's start with you. How old are you? Seven. Seven years old. You are quite the handsome young man. <laughs> Tell me, how did you find out that you were allergic to peanuts? What happened? Well, when I was two years old, my mom gave me some of her ice cream, and it may have cross-contaminated with nuts, mm -hmm. and I started throwing up. I had severe hives. Well, my ears also started to get swollen, wow. and I had trouble breathing, so my mom and dad took me to the doctor. The doctor, so it was pretty serious. Yeah, and they said I was allergic to peanuts, treats, and peas. Now, Maria, this is very common, reactions like this, when people eat peanuts and they're allergic, correct? That's right, and reactions usually happen within minutes and even seconds of ingesting the food, though sometimes they can take up to a few hours to present. But that's what makes food allergic reactions so dangerous, is that they are very unpredictable. So you can start with mild symptoms, like some hives and discomfort around the mouth, and it can escalate to very dangerous and life-threatening symptoms like trouble breathing, drop in blood pressure, and in fact, that's what happened with my daughter when we first discovered her peanut allergy. Really? Yeah, it Did was you rush terrible. her to the hospital? We had to rush her to the hospital. She was not even two years old yet. She had a tiny bite of a peanut butter cracker, and it started off with just hives, but pretty soon hives covered her entire body, eyes swelled shut, she was unrecognizable, trouble breathing, mm -hmm. vomiting violently. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. I, I can't even imagine that. And I, and I was reading here regarding hospital visits because of this. According to the CDC, which is, of course, the Center for Disease Control, food allergies result in more than 300 thousand ambulatory care visits a year among children in the U.S. That's right. That's And that's just a statistic for children alone. It is so important to get emergency care when you've got a severe allergic reaction because it is a situation where seconds count. And seconds count, and that's why, Leandro, you carry with you at all times what's called an epinephrine auto injector. Can you show it to me? Yes. This is it. You go to school with this, the park, everywhere. Yes. Why do you carry it, sweetheart? Just in case if I ever eat peanuts, like, that's what I use for my medicine. Maria, can you show us how it works? I know you brought an orange to illustrate, but Absolutely. that is an actual injector. This is an actual injector, and it is my daughter Nina's expired epinephrine auto injector. Okay. And I'm going to show you how it works by injecting it into an orange, simulating the thigh. This is an intramuscular injection. It goes in the thigh. Mm -hmm. You pull it out. You hold it like this, thumb here pull out the gray activation cap and you would put it in the muscular part of the thigh and then press firmly for a count of 10. And you heard that pop. Wow. That's how you know it injected. Count what to is, 10 and you pull it out. What is it actually doing now? Buying time? So epinephrine saves your life. It does buy you time in that it um, remains in your body and acts for about 10 or 15 minutes, gives you time to get to the emergency room and get the medical attention you need. But what a lot of people don't know is that when you're having a severe allergic reaction, an antihistamine will not save your life. Epinephrine is what saves your life. And Leandro can do it by himself. I mean, at what age can a child actually do it by themselves? It's pretty simple. It's very simple to do, and it is one of the safest drugs out there. There. And it's individual according to every child, their uh, maturity level. But it is vital that kids be allowed to carry epinephrine auto injectors and, yes, when they're old enough, self administer. Now, I know more studies need to be done as to what is happening here with, uh, with all these food allergies and the increase. And you and I were talking a little earlier about the fact that we really don't know, but. The goal here is to create awareness. Yes, we need awareness and education because right now the medical community just does not know why we've got this yeah. exponential increase in food allergies. We need more research for a cure and until then time, education and awareness are the key. And that's where you come in. You are a young man that's now becoming a superstar. You did a public service announcement for FAN and uh, I believe from what I heard, you did incredible. I want to show our audience and show them how well you did and what the message is. You want to take a look? Yeah. Let's do that. Food allergy doesn't discriminate and more than 12 million Americans manage this condition daily. 
Join me in the Fan Walk for Food Allergy. For more information or to register, visit foodallergywalk.org. You did so well. Tell me why you wanted to, uh, to speak out and do that public service announcement. It was important for me to do that so we could raise awareness for a fan and so lots of children in the U.S. and around the world will be safe and so we could raise money for the fan walks so we could find a cure. I think it's a great cause. Leandro, thank you so much for taking the time. You are a spectacular young boy. I'm giving you your auto injector back. Maria, thank you so much for all the information. Thank you for letting us be on here. No, it's an honor on my part. And after the break, we're going to talk more about peanut allergies. We're going to show you how a country singer is helping make a difference as well. And we're going to meet a father who lost his son as a result of a peanut allergy. His story's coming up. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We've been talking about the increase in food allergies in the United States and what's being done to create awareness. Country singer Trace Atkins recently recorded a public service announcement that's airing nationally. Watch. More than 12 million Americans, including 3 million children, have potentially life-threatening food allergies. My daughter, Brianna, is one of them. For more information, please speak with your doctor or visit foodallergy.org. Until there's a cure, it's crucial we learn how to Respect every bite. A public service from FAM. As you can see, many people doing their part to help create awareness on this growing trend, including my next guest, Brian Hom. He lost his son, BJ, in the summer of 2008 as a result of his peanut allergy. Good morning, Mr. Hom. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Let's talk about your son, BJ. You knew that he was allergic to peanuts, correct? Yes, when he was two years old, we went out to a restaurant and he had an allergic reaction which caused his face to be swelling. He was red and basically his eyes to be all swollen shut. So we knew that something he ate was causing an allergic reaction. Also, a few years later in preschool, he had a piece of candy. Same thing happened when he would have swelling, rash all over his body. So we took him to an allergist and they determined that he had peanut allergy. And it was always a mild reaction, correct? Yeah, it was always a mild reaction, just basically hives, itchy throat, uh, just uh, eczema. And how would you treat it? You would give him Benadryl, I believe? Yeah, Benadryl would cure him, basically would give it to him, and a few hours later, all the swelling, all the itching would go away, and he would be fine. And normally, that's how he grew up? Yeah, he grew up his, his whole 18 years that way, never had anything more severe than itchy throat, hives, swelling. And then you plan a very important family vacation to Mexico. It was his birthday. Yeah. Tell me about it. Basically it was the summer July 1st 2008. We wanted to celebrate this a special occasion so I planned a family trip with my wife and his two younger brothers to Cabos, Mexico. We wanted to celebrate his birthday and his graduation from high school so we were all excited, got up early, had a long trip flying down to Cobbles. We arrived at the airport at 7 o'clock, got to the resort at 8 o'clock. So we went to dinner, pretty much was uneventful, meaning you know nothing happened. We, we had a nice meal. We, we said, let's go walk around. It's still daylight. We, we went out and we saw the beach. The beach was there and we saw the, uh, the pool and then we started walking around. And then BJ, you know, which was his last words to me, he said, Dad, uh, my throat hurts, can you buy me some cough drops? So I said, okay, let's go to the gift shop. I got him some cough drops, so. But you hadn't noticed any hives or anything? No. It was just, Daddy, my throat hurts. Yeah, my throat hurts. That's why I said, Dad, my throat hurts. So I got him some cough drops. He went walking off with Kathy, my wife, and I took my two other sons, Brandon and Stephen, to the arcade. And moments later, some lady comes running into the arcade and says, sir, you need to come to the lobby. Your son has fallen ill. So I, I run to the lobby, and what I see is my son, his eyes are open, he's unable to talk, and he's gasping for air. He's all pale, his lips are blue. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he collapses to the ground, and the staff comes running, trying to help, applying CPR. The doctor finally came five, ten minutes later, and I said, doctor, 
the staff is telling me he's breathing, he's going to be okay. And, you know, he looked at me and he took a deep breath and he says, sorry. It was like somebody had ripped our heart right out of our chest. And basically, we were just, it was just a horrific situation. Mr. Helm, and I'm so sorry for your loss, and I can't imagine your pain. Um, but um, did he have, um, as Leandro showed us, um, an epinephrine auto injector? Unfortunately, he didn't. He had one prescribed when he was two, but we never had a reaction like that. It was always just the hives, the swelling, right. and the itchy throat, and the Benadryl. Would it have made a difference, you think, sir? I think so. I think it would have made a difference. I know you're here not only for your son's memory, but you're so courageous enough to share this story with us because you want to create awareness as well. I want to make sure that other parents know that food allergies are real. Do not take them lightly. You know, losing a child, I, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. You know, it's a parent's worst nightmare. I live with it every day. It's a life-changing event. Any parent can sympathize with the loss of a child, but until you really lose one. And to lose one to food, uh, peanuts, a day-to-day -day staple that people eat on a regular basis. Kids take peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to school. People eat it at baseball games. But what's peanut is a staple for somebody is a poison for many out there. So I'm trying to raise awareness and such. I, I brought a t-shirt for you that we use for the fan walk that basically says, you know, Team BJ, fight food allergy. It's in loving memory of Brian James Hom II, June 25th, 1990, July 1st, 2008. He's my angel in heaven. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And again, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. And if you want more information on peanut allergies and how serious they can be, everything you need to know is at the Food Allergy and Anaphylaxis Network, which is foodallergy.org.